Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. Gold and silver spring back just for a moment. Let's explore. An intriguing day it has been in the precious metal markets. We're looking at the charts right now. Uh, this is where the numbers are. Negligible move in the positive direction. That's not what happened earlier today. Yay, though everything is in the green, except for rhodium. It's down over 3%. But palladium has really jumped to some new life here with a 6% increase. And platinum, uh, almost a 5% increase, 4.51%. But gold and silver are just hanging out here. But what happened here, we can see from this chart that they, they sprung up pretty dramatically here, gold. And then it just kind of uh, fell right back down to kind of where it was earlier um, before today. And uh, let's see, silver is pretty much the same thing here. When we look at the charts there for silver between the last two days, we can see that big jump up for the price of silver. And it's still up slightly on the day, but not a whole lot. So what happened? Why that big spike and why the big pullback? Well, looking at an article here from CNBC, gold popped over 1% as U.S. jobs data missed cool Fed taper bets. <clears throat> uh, gold hit a more than a two-week high on Friday as the dollar took a breather after U.S. jobs data came in well below expectations casting doubts about an immediate start to tapering by the Federal Reserve. Spot gold rose 1.2% to $1,777 an ounce by 9.38 a.m. And, uh, and this is where it is now, 17.57, so it lost a lot of that momentum early in the day. It's set for a second straight weekly gain. U.S. gold futures advanced 1.3% to $1,781.60. U.S. employment increased far less than expected in September, but hiring could pick up in the months ahead as COVID-19 infections subside. The dollar eased after the data, making gold cheaper for other currency holders. Gold has uh, seen a good gain as this data reduces the likelihood that we'll be seeing tapering in November. I don't think we're going to see it at all this year. That's from an independent analyst, Ross Norman, said, adding it's also encouraging to see silver joining the party, and that would give gold bulls some confidence. Silver rose 2.3% to $23.09 and went over $23 earlier in the day. Other metals, too, followed along with platinum rising 5.7% and uh, palladium gaining 4.7%. It's actually higher than that now. Those, those metals kept going up. But uh, the dollar eased essentially after the data, making gold and current and silver cheaper. Uh, bullion is on the front foot, quickly looking to challenge $1,785 an ounce, TD Securities analyst wrote in a note, adding while the taper is a foregone conclusion, there could be some short covering following aggressive flows associated with the pricing of a number of a November Fed exit. Fed Chair Jerome Powell had said it would take one more decent jobs report to set the process in motion for a reduction in U.S. Central Bank's 120 billion dollars in monthly bond purchases. Of course, we didn't get that. Reduced stimulus and higher interest rates lift bond yields, translating into an increased opportunity cost for holding bullion, which pays no interest. But for the gold narrative to really pick up again, we need an impulsive rally above $1,950 or $1,960 an ounce or the pre-COVID-19 vaccine highs. And that would require significant catalysts not in the market right now, said a New York-based precious metals trader. And I guess realizing that, that as well as with the dollar kind of moving the other direction and the reality kind of, well, hey, that, that, that jobs report 
came out, but it's kind of a no nothing burger because it's kind of much the same type of deal. Well, the metals kind of just taper back. The only tapering now in the day since about 9.40 a.m. this morning, the only tapering we're seeing is of the prices of gold and silver. Back down to just nominal increases, well below a tenth of a percent for both metals. Um, but platinum and palladium will continue to hold strong. Well, they're rare precious metals. Being rare and being sought after and kind of in a way at war with themselves, um, that leads to increases, especially in palladium. Wild to see. But nonetheless, uh, the gold to silver ratio as an effect has not moved a whole lot as we imagined. It's just above 77.7 uh, silver ounces to one ounce of gold. And there's where the markets are. But uh, I believe this kind of volatility, this kind of, you know, little spikes here and there and coming to the realization reality, especially with silver being the lack of industrial demand. But I believe the price movements we saw today in silver and gold, but especially silver, is playing more as a monetary metal or a hedge. It's price movements. Uh, in other words, it's spike up a little bit in price following gold's spike up in price. And that's just it. That's why silver is so hard to really peg down because it's, it's uh, in, in one moment it can be tied to gold, but in the next moment, well, it's seen as a commodity by the markets. And so therefore it's traded as a commodity, separating itself from gold in that regard. That's one of the reasons why I have been focusing more on gold over the last uh, three to four years here and, uh, and some of the purchases I've been making. Nonetheless, there it is. Fascinating to see the markets move as they have today, but I believe this may set us up for, again, as, been, as has been predicted, uh, for a continued kind of bear market for a while for gold and silver. Uh, there's some say that, you know, more reports may be coming out this month that could change the fortunes for uh, gold um, and silver. And we'll see how that plays out. I'm not sure exactly. Um, if that, you know, if these some of these numbers, especially when we tie in inflation and continued jobs reports, if we're going to see um, enough of a enough to make a difference in the price, uh, we'll just have to wait it out and see. It's fun to talk about. It's kind of interesting to to analyze it and see where things are in the markets. As you know, they're very emotional, and uh, but nonetheless, uh, we did see this pop up, and uh, that's springing back of. Gold and silver, even just for a brief moment in time, uh, means that there is certainly chances that we can see these metals uh, come back and have a sustained rally, but it may take a while for that to happen. I believe in the interim, we will see these little spikes and dips um, probably through the end of the year, um, as October may not bring us what some people have expected or thought it should bring us in terms of the prices for gold and silver. Uh, regardless, and there you have it. Fascinating indeed, but we know, aside from all that, the fundamentals of gold and silver are why we stack them, and those fundamentals really are um, act independent of what the price is. And so, therefore, we uh, continue to understand that they preserve our wealth over the long course of time, despite price movements um, in what I consider gold and silver being like an insurance policy, the premiums rise, the premiums go down, just like the premiums you pay on your homeowner's insurance. A subscriber of mine talked about it. He had paid, I think, $20,000 over the course of him owning his home and uh, never had to use it a single time. But does he regret uh, per, uh, that $20,000 purchase? No, he's glad he's got it. And uh, he'll never see that money again, but he had the protection for that time. I think that's the same thing with gold and silver. Um, you know, you could spend all that money as long as you have the physical in your hand. Um, then you can use it as a hedge and a protection. And by the way, by some extension, even as an ETF, they can hedge within the markets, within the stock market. Um, uh, if you make electronic trades, well, highly liquid, you just cash those out um, as you as you see fit, as long as the uh, infrastructure is there to be able to make trades and sell them, well, you can do it. 
The gold and silver in the physical is the ultimate safe haven and protection because it doesn't rely on a network or third party in order for them to be um, uh, utilized and to protect us. Uh, you do pay a premium for that too, by the way. But when the spot prices are low, that premium tends to go down a little bit. Yes, indeed. All right, there you have it. Uh, there's your news for the day. If you enjoy stories like this, we'll talk about the news as well. I talk about um, show precious metals, do unboxings, talk about precious metal crimes, talk about found precious metal treasures, uh, throw in a few scam calls here and there, and that's kind of the channel. We have a little bit of fun in the live streams as well, so I hope you will stick around. hope you'll watch some of the older videos of a variety of different topics. This is probably the most diverse precious metals channel out there. Dabble in the world of coin collecting, modern and classic and the like. I've done a lot of different things, save for a few things like coin roll hunting and the like. Or, but nonetheless, we do talk about a lot here on this channel. So a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch. And to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.